In this video, I want to summarize the basic techniques we and, and tips that we've learned from U substitution so far and do some more examples of computing antiderivatives using this technique of U substitution. So there's two sort of guiding principles one should use, two rules of thumb, uh, when deciding whether you should use a U substitution to calculate an antiderivative or not. And so these two principles are listed in front of you, A and B here. First of all, U should be equal to some expression that's inside the integrand, the function you're trying to integrate. If U isn't there, then why the junk are you bringing it up in the first place? I'm not exactly sure. So you want to substitute that expression with U. Um, and this substitution generally should be chosen to make the expression becomes simpler. The integrand should be simpler than it was before. If you've made a sum substitution that makes it more complicated, then you're probably going in the wrong direction. And typically this function, which is u, is inside of some other function as well. So look for that. u should be chosen to be something in the, in the, in the integral to simplify it. And then also the second part, and this is perhaps one of the most important parts, is that whatever we choose to be u, the derivative of that function uh, needs to be inside of the integrand as well. The derivative of u needs to be present. Although if you're only off by a constant multiple, uh, we saw in the previous example how one can correct that. And we'll see some examples of that in this video as well. So if you're off by a constant multiple, no big deal. Uh, so let's, let's look at these functions right here. Generally speaking, u is gonna be inside of another function. So use like your parentheses in the function as sort of like, uh, as, a, as a radar, as a sonar to help us identify who should you be. And this can be difficult at first. Students sometimes struggle to identify who is the best choice of you, right? You don't always know who the best you you are until well, you practice a little bit more with it. I always love using the variable you because it leads to awkward uh, English grammar when I say things like you is. Uh, sounds like I'm, I'm illiterate at the moment. But anyways, uh, we want to choose functions which are generally inside of functions. So with this one right here, I see these parentheses in front of me, x squared plus 6x squared. Uh, so that kind of indicates to me that, well, because I have these parentheses right here, maybe that's my choice of u. Uh, so more specifically, we'll take u to be x squared plus 6x. That is inside of the function. And if I were to replace, if I were to replace the denominator with a u, we would end up with a u squared on the bottom. I would say that's arguably simpler. Uh, but what about everything else, right? Well, let's look at the inner derivative. Uh, look inside yourself and find your inner derivative who wants to come out and play. If you take the derivative of x squared plus 6x, you end up with a 2x, a 2x plus 6 dx. And is that what we have in the numerator? Well, we have in the numerator is an x plus 3 times dx. But then if you're like, well, because that's the thing. It's like, oh, does that, does that work, right? I want a 2x plus six, but if you look at the numerator, it's like, well, and then if you look at your du, it's like, uh, well, I guess I could take out a two x. I mean, that's common to both there, two. No, sorry, not take out a two x, take out a two. Uh, that'll leave behind an x plus three, and voila, we found it, it's a miracle. Um, if you put, if you take a two over two right here, you can correct that missing coefficient of two you have. And so you're gonna end up with a, the, the two, the two times x plus three times dx, this right here becomes your du. And so you end up with a du in the numerator and then a one half out in front. And that I would say is a much simpler integral to compute than what we started with. One half the integral of du over u squared. That simplifies the integral and the derivative of the inner function was contained inside the integral here. The calling card of the chain rule was present at the crime scene. So we want to integrate one half the integral of u to the negative two du. I'm going to use negative two for the forthcoming power rule here, right? Because uh, by the power rule, you raise the power by one. So raising negative two by one, you're adding one to it. You're going to get u uh, to the negative one and then divide by that power and add a constant. And so you're going to get a coefficient of one half in front. Um, u to the negative one, of course, is the same thing as one over u if you prefer to write it using a reciprocal since the original function had a reciprocal, it makes sense to do that. But you shouldn't write your final answer with u. u is this like artificial variable we inserted uh, into the problem. What we need to do is go back to the original variable, which was the variable x here. And so we're gonna get negative one over two times x squared plus six x. And then there's a constant added to that. And so this gives us our antiderivative of this function right here. 
Uh, looking at another example, uh, we get 2x minus 3 over x squared minus 3x. We want to find a u in order to make a u substitution right here. And it might not be necessarily obvious here because I don't see any parentheses here, but whenever you have a fractional function of some kind, a fraction like this, uh, the denominator is often a good choice to be the u uh, because the denominator, I like to think of that fraction bar there as sort of like a, it's a wall, um, like a Berlin wall that separates families on the two sides. Oh no, bring us together. And so the just like parentheses uh, are functions in prison inside the denominator. And that's who we're going to select to be our u. Typically, that function, which is in prison inside of some other one. Take u to be x squared minus 3x. Well, its derivative is 2x minus 3 uh, dx. And that is exactly what we have in the numerator, right? 2x minus 3 dx. Uh, whoops, sorry about that. Uh, you end up with du. And so then making this u substitution work right here, we end up with du over u, or if you prefer, 1 over u du. Now, the power rule doesn't work in this situation because if you did switch this to a power, you get u to the negative one, um, in which case the power rule doesn't work in that situation. Um, in, he, in this case, you just want to remember that one over u is the derivative of the natural log. So you get the natural log of the absolute value of u plus a constant. And then substitute back in um, your u, which is x squared minus 3. So we get the natural log of the absolute value of x squared minus 3x plus a constant. And don't forget the absolute values because x squared minus three is not always a positive expression. It depends on the choice of x. So you do need to have the absolute values that the domain is correct. Without the absolute value, you wouldn't have the correct most general antiderivative. Uh, so do consider that one there. Uh, as another example, we could take the integral of e to the five x. And yet there is a chain going on here, right? When the exponential function, typically your u is gonna be chosen to be the exponent because the exponent is trapped inside there. Oh no, free me. And so take u to be 5x, then du would equal just 5dx, which I don't see the 5 there, but oh, was well, that a butterfly going by? And when no one's looking, you write the 5 over 5 there. So it's like, oh, it was there the whole time. JK, everyone, no worries. So you get 1 fifth the integral of e to the u du. Notice that the 5 in the numerator times the dx, this comes together and becomes du which we make that substitution right here. And so if you want to integrate u with respect to u, e to the, or sorry, integrate e to u with respect to u, e to the u is its own antiderivative. So we get one fifth e to the u plus a constant, right? In which case, if you plug back in u as five x, you get one fifth e to the five x plus a constant right here. And this is a very simple u substitution that we're gonna see a lot. And so we actually might just kind of memorize this formula. If you integrate e to the ax dx, uh, the antiderivative will always be 1 over a e to the ax plus a constant. Uh, nothing too significant about the 5 right there. Uh, let's take a look at this one. Take the integral of x squared e to the x cubed. If we follow the same idea from the last one, the exponent of an exponential is imprisoned, and it's usually a good choice for u. Uh, so what do we have u equals x cubed? Well, then du would equal 3x squared dx. And then when everyone's distracted, you write your 3 on the inside, your 1 third on the outside. And so then we have our du, the inner derivative, 3x squared dx. This is our du. And so then the antiderivative can be simplified to be 1 third. The integral of e to the x cubed becomes an e to the u. And then the 3x squared dx becomes a du. And so just like the last example, it doesn't matter how complicated the u is, the antiderivative e to the u is still going to be e to the u plus a constant. And plug back in the original expression for u. So one third e to the x cubed plus a constant. And this gives us our antiderivative right here. It's pretty awesome how nice this u substitution works here. Uh, but don't... I mean, the, the reason it keeps on working is because I am giving you some an, or some integrals for which the inner derivative can be created up to some scalar multiple. That's not always the case, but uh, we can explore more of that in Calculus 2. Now, here, uh, here, here, let's do one last example in this segment right here. Uh, let's take the integral of x cubed 
times cosine of x to the fourth plus one. We have a trigonometric function here. We haven't done any of these yet, and but trigonometric functions naturally come with these parentheses. This kind of indicates the thing inside the parentheses is probably going to be our u. Take u to be x to the fourth plus two. Taking the derivative, we see that the inner derivative should be four x cubed dx. We have, of course, the dx. That's always there. We have the x cubed. We need a four. And we can do that, of course, by timesing 4 over 4 there. Uh, so therefore, 4x cubed and the dx comes together to give us uh, our du. And so the simplified version of the integral becomes 1 fourth. The integral of the 4x cubed dx, that just becomes a du. And the cosine of x to the fourth plus 2, that just becomes cosine of u. Cosine of u right here. And remember that although... Although the derivative of cosine of x is equal to negative sine of x, we actually have the opposite true when we do antiderivatives. The antiderivative of cosine of x dx, that's going to be a positive sign because we're looking for a function whose derivative is cosine. So when we do that here, we end up with one fourth uh, sine of u plus a constant. And then substitute back in the original value of u, which is x to the fourth plus two. We get our antiderivative one fourth sine of x to the fourth plus two, uh, plus our constant here. And so that gives us some more examples of u substitution. Uh, we'll do some more in the next video. Please take a look at that to, to see it, so you can uh, so you can see some more fun examples though. But as always, if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments. Uh, here on YouTube. I'll be glad to answer them if you post any. Um, like this video, subscribe so you can see more cool calculus videos and other math videos in the future, and I'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.